Good afternoon, and welcome to another album review. Uh, as I said, I was going to put out some more Kansas reviews, and I've still got the ball rolling on Kansas. Uh, today, I'm going to talk an album. Um, I found this album at a place we have in Austin called Buybacks. It used to be Planet Replay but they changed their name to buybacks and certain other states have buybacks I don't know where but I know there's other buybacks that exist besides the Austin location and what buybacks is is a used uh, place where you can get CDs, DVDs, and video games all, all the kinds of great stuff there all for used price and I found this CD for only two bucks or two dollars and fourteen cents and since I had discovered Cool Dude Bailey, who's a huge Kansas fan on YouTube, I asked him if the album, this album was particularly worth it or not. He told me to, to get it, and I thought, okay, well, I'm going to buy it as soon as I get paid. And, and on payday, I did purchase this album. And the album that I'm talking about is this one right here. Kansas's 1986 album, Power. There it is, 1986. Powered by Kansas, and this was one heck of a bargain. Only cost me two dollars and fourteen cents used, and the CD plays great, it's in great condition, and everything. And on my last review, I had reviewed Drastic Measures, and had said that in with that album, there were some big changes in the band. Um, you know, Steve Walsh had left prior to that, and then Robbie Steinhardt left. And Drastic Measures, as you will see in my review, I had said it was not a huge success, and then the band ends up splitting up. So Kansas is over at that time period. Fast forward to 1986, Steve Walsh uh, decides, for whatever reason, to reform Kansas, and he gets back with uh, the two long-standing members, Phil Lee Hart and Rich Williams, who have always been there, and also gets... Uh, two new members in the group. Uh, most importantly, uh, Steve Morris, the guitar player known for being with the Dixie Dregs, and then later on, uh, years later, went in to join Deep Purple. And then a new bassist named Billy Greer. And Billy Greer has been with them ever since. But here's, I'm going to show you this, here's a picture, like a, kind of a picture collage of them. Here you go. Let's see if you can see that well. There's There they all are. You know, Bill Ehart, Rich Williams, uh, yeah, newcomer Steve Morris, and Billy Greer. This is Billy Greer's first album on bass, and a real gay picture of Steve Walsh. All right, so let's talk power. Today we talk power by Kansas. Well, this is the first Kansas album with a new lineup. This is a new chapter. This is chapter three in the band's history, in my opinion. Uh, this is the third chapter for Kansas. New sound. Um, new sound. What we have here is a, another five-piece lineup. You know, we have uh, you know, Rich Williams on guitar, Steve Morris on guitar, Steve Walsh on keyboards and vocals, Billy Hart on drums, and, as I said, newcomer Billy Greer on bass. No violin to speak of. They did not get a violin player on this. Uh, but this is also a very different Kansas album. This is more in the... Doesn't have that classic 70s sound on the classic albums such as uh, Song for America or Point of No Return, Left Overture. Very different. It's very, it is very 80s. And um, to be honest with you... I was a little hesitant to get this because what I previewed from it on YouTube didn't really hit much for me. I didn't really care for it. So I truly thought this album was going to suck. I really did. I thought that that I was not going to like this album at all. Turns out it opens up with a good rocker, really hard rocker, Silhouettes in Disguise. And I previewed that on YouTube just to make sure, like, do I really want this? And then eventually I went and bought the CD. I was on my way out of town to my parents to go spend time with my parents on a little vacation that I took from work. 
and it's like, wow, this is actually a really rocking song, and the harmonies sound really good. This The album opens up really well with Silhouettes in Disguise. Actually, this one's a really good rocker. I really do like Silhouettes in Disguise. No complaints with this one. This is one of the best songs. Very strong song on this one. Look that up on YouTube. I recommend it if you haven't heard Silhouettes in Disguise. Uh, next, we have the title song, which is Power. Power is like kind of a, a nice... It's got this kind of somewhat quiet percussion part with the guitar and I think a bass. And then it gets into the song and then the chorus is like really out there like power, take power. It's a little cheesy but it's pretty cool still. I like it. It's kind of a little on the silly, not silly, but a little on the cheesy side. But that's not a bad thing. I actually like power is also a really good one. Uh, it's another one I think a lot of the Kansas fans from these days really like. This is another um, winter tra uh, song on this. All I Wanted was the album's single, uh, one of the singles from the album, and uh, it's kind of like a pop ballad, but actually it's not bad, it's actually pretty good. When I first heard it, I didn't really care for it, but once I heard it on CD and I kept listening to the album, it's actually pretty good. I like Steve Walsh's voice sounds good, um, and the guitars sound really good, there's I think a little bit of keyboard in this as well. But yeah, All I Wanted is a pretty good song. Not not a bad choice for a single, I don't think. Um, I will say, since I did mention Steve Walsh's voice, his voice does sound a little different on this album. It doesn't sound as he did on the 70s and early 80s with audio visions. His voice sounds a bit different. Um, I've heard that, or I read that he was going through some substance abuse problems and wasn't taking very good care of himself and during the tour of this album he really shot his voice and was having a hard time singing um, so I hate to say it but in some ways he kinda sounds like the guy from Survivor I don't know the dude's name because I hate Survivor but the good thing is that's John that's Steve Walsh singing and not the Survivor guy so but we're going on to number four, Secret Service. This one's a little silly. Uh, this is like a kind of a regular pace song, heavy drums, and then there's this chorus that goes, Secret Service. Um, this one I don't really care for too much. This one's a little silly. What it reminds me of, actually, is, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Christian rock band DeGarmo and Key, but they had this song that was pretty popular in the Christian music scene uh, called 666, and it was actually aired on MTV, but they had to make an edited version because MTV found the music video to be too violent. Kind of hard to, uh, to believe for a Christian rock band, but it kind of reminds me of the song 666. Um, I'm not saying I'm a DeGarmo and Key fan, but listen to 666 if you want to try to see if you can find a comparison. That's just what maybe you want, but that's just what it reminded me of. And then it gets up to We're Not Alone Anymore with this big guitar part from Steve Morris going doo doo doo. This one uh, kind of gets a little too all over the place for me. I really don't care for this song too much. It just, I don't know, it's just a bit much for me. Um... We're not alone anymore. I'm not a big fan of this one. This one just doesn't do anything for me. Um, so that's song number five. Don't have much to say about that one. Number six is a very interesting. Musicato. Now this is their experimental rock piece. It's, it's, it's instrumental. It's a three minute song. It's, it's a big build up. It starts to build up with the keyboards, guitars, the drums, the bass. Everyone comes in. And it just goes into this big rocking type song. And then it goes back into that build up thing again. It reminds me of um, of Yes's cinema song from their 901 to 5 period. Uh, that's what it really reminds me of, kind of, when Yes had the instrumental piece cinema on their first album with uh, Trevor Rabin. Um, but Musicato is actually a cool one. I really like this one a lot. Um, Pretty good. I really like this. Music Kato, I recommend. Look that one up on YouTube. <sighs> Taking in the View is a real slow song. And it doesn't really do a whole lot for me. This one's, to, to me, just a filler song. 
Don't really care for this one. It's, it's slow. There's no drums on this one. It's just guitar and keyboards, I think. Um, bass. Three Pretenders is good. This one it comes in right after taking in the view. This one's a good rocker. It's got a nice grooving um, flow to it. And the harmonies sound really good on this one. I really do like Three Pretenders. So this is a standout on the on the uh, on the album. I'm not sure if he's talking about uh, past members of the band when he's talking about Three Pretenders. I did read a review on Amazon from a fan saying that the the fan thought the Three Pretenders meant Carrie Livgreen, Dave Hope, and John Elefante, but I totally disagree with that, and so did everybody else. I think. I don't think he's just referencing those guys, but I could be wrong. And then, number nine. Here we go. Tomb 19. This song is the gem on the album. When I first heard this song on my way to Bryan, Texas, where I'm from, I decided almost immediately this was my favorite song on the album. This is a great hard rocker. This this is a really great hard rocking song. I love this one. And the lyrics are really cool too. It reminds me of a very Indiana Jones type thing where they talk about if you take the treasure of tomb 19, you'll be cursed, you know. Uh, don't turn around. But it's uh, tomb 19. This is, you got to look this up. I, I can see why uh, some people say this is one of their favorite uh songs from the album. This is one of the, this is the, in my opinion, if I could pick a hit, this would be my personal hit. 219 is a great, great song. I love this song. Uh, one of my favorite Kansas songs up in the, in the list of their great songs. And then the album ends, excuse me, with uh, Can't Cry Anymore, which starts off kind of cool. It's got this heavy bass drum part. Or maybe it's a floor tom. Anyway, it's big, heavy, low drum part and um, keyboards, but it's a real sappy ballad. It's a ballad, and when I first saw the video for this, the video is pretty horrible, by the way. You can see this on YouTube. I was like, oh, man, no. This is not the Kansas that I like. This, <laughs> this is a little too sappy for me. But it's the last song on the album, and I've realized with most of the Kansas albums I've, I've, I have listen to, the last songs are always the worst, or one of the worst. Not, not necessarily the worst songs, but the last songs on the album are the ones that I find filler. I know a lot of Kansas fans love Can't Cry Anymore, um, and that's cool if you do. Me, personally, I don't really like it. Um, yeah, I think it's a little sappy. But other than that, that's the album. That's my opinion of Kansas's Power. Um, and I was very uncertain about this album. Didn't know if I was going to like this. But actually, it turns out to be a big surprise. There's some stuff on here I really, really do like. I think that there's some really strong offerings on this. Of course, Tomb 19. You know, I can't, I can't say enough how great I think Tomb 19 is. Because um, to me, that song is just absolutely perfect. That's the most perfect on here. And um, the cover art is kind of cool, kind of cheesy. It's very 80s, very 80s cover art, I think. And the Kansas logo is back. It's a bit, a little bit different, but hey, you got to love that Kansas logo, the classic Kansas logo. I mean, I do, anyway. And as you can tell, I was lazy, didn't take the price tag off. It says right there, I paid $1.99. That's like $2.15 with tax steal for a CD. CDs are expensive. And as I said in my previous review, I paid a whole 24 bucks for Drastic Measures. I'm a sucker for Kansas. What can I say? So that's the Power album. The first Kansas album with the new lineup since the breakup in 83. Uh, I'm going to grade this album. Um, I think this album is very worthy of a B. I would give this a B. Um... This is not an album I would recommend you start with in Kansas. Uh, you have to work your way up to it. Like I said, I was hesitant to get it because I knew how different it was. And those liking Robbie Steinhardt's violin playing, you're not going to hear that here. Uh, Robbie Steinhardt and Carrie Livery were both long gone. Um, 
So neither one of them are on here. Um, and of course, you know, Dave Hope's not on here. You've got Billy Greer now. But Billy Greer is a good bass player. He's a good, uh, I'd say, replacement. He could play very well. And uh, it's good to see that he's still playing with them to this day. Um, but yeah, Power gets a B. Basically, if you want a good starting point for Kansas, I would say, in my opinion, pick up any of the albums, like the first... Uh, what was it, eight albums they did with the original lineup. Anything from Kansas up to Audio Visions I think is a good starting point. Um, you really can't go wrong. I'd say get about four of those albums and then maybe work your way to this one. And you might want to get Freaks of Nature before you even get this one. Uh, Freaks of Nature, they got you know a new violinist, David Ragsdale. And... Um, so you had the violin back again. But there was a period of time for Kansas where there was no violin or viola. And uh, if you really want to hear the violin, you not, you might not be happy with this album. But I think it's a pretty decent effort. It's not a perfect album. And it's not, not really essential. But it's definitely worth checking out. It's worth listening to. But... I actually think this was a pleasant surprise. I thought I really thought I was going to be disappointed with this album, but I really do like this album. So I'm giving Power a B. Kansas's 1986 album a B. And uh, and then one other thing I got to comment: Steve Morse is the guitar player on this album, and I was also very hesitant to kind of listen to it because I don't like Steve Morse. I know that probably stepped on a few toes. The main reason why I don't like him is because. When he joined Deep Purple, he didn't make Deep Purple any better. Deep Purple put out some of their worst albums with Steve Moore's. The only album that I liked a little bit was Perpendicular. There were like four songs I really liked on that. But I hated Bananas. And I really hated Rapture of the Deep. And I didn't like Abandon all that much either. But... You know, Steve Morris kind of rubs me the wrong way just because of that. And I know there's some Deep Purple fans that think Bananas was one of the best things they did. I shelled out a lot of money to buy that brand new, and I wished I didn't. I was very disappointed with it. But we're talking Kansas, not Deep Purple. But Steve Morris does a pretty good job on this album. Uh, I don't like all of his guitar playing. Like, I really don't like what he's playing, and we're not alone anymore. It's a little too out there, a little too all over the place for me. Tomb 19, he's got some... <clears throat> Come on, turn on. Come on, turn on, I don't have any light. Tomb 19, he's got some really good guitar playing. And, um... Musicato, there's some great stuff in there. But yeah, that's uh, my opinion of Kansas's power. And I think a B is a solid grade for it, alright? That's another Kansas review. And, um... I hope you enjoyed that. Look for some more Kansas reviews. I will definitely be getting around to some. There it goes. I'm going to definitely be going, getting around to some Blue Oyster Cult too. I've got to get on that because I'm basically doing this in celebration of the concert I'm about to see in three months. Seeing Kansas with BOC in Houston uh, May 31st. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, going to be doing some more album reviews, some more Kansas coming real soon. All right. Thanks. Have a good afternoon.